Hello everybody, this is Chris Brown, trumpet player and educator. Happy New Year. Today's tutorial is on the shake. Let me play you a little bit of something and we'll talk about this great technique. Alright, so that is a little bit of uh, my measly attempt at kind of demonstrating the shake for you in an application where I'm just playing through the uh, great hymn of the faith, the uh, amazing grace, and uh, just doing a little rendition of it kind of in a Dixieland style. Um, as you can see from my demonstration there, that it kind of creates a little bit more excitement to it. If you notice, that may kind of take you back to a little bit of hearing the great Louis Armstrong, how I was uh, attempting to do the shakes was in kind of the Louis Armstrong fashion and manner. So the shake is a really exciting technique that you can use in your playing to do a lot of things. In fact, you can use it in so many different genres, so many different positions and places from uh, really music of of hundreds of years ago to present day music, whether it's popular music of the day, obviously jazz, it is very prominent. Um, musicals, I'm playing in some musicals and with some symphonies and things like Bernstein's West Side Story, there's an opportunities for that. There's some opportunities at the end of that song where they're shaking on an F sharp on the staff. Um, you can utilize it in so many different settings, even in types of settings like in Baroque music, it can come into play. Now, not exactly how I was doing it right there, but it can be beneficial to you. Let me tell you though, from my development of just utilizing the shake in my own life, it has actually helped me in a number of areas. And one of those areas, which is near and dear to probably every trumpet player's heart, is how to play higher and more effectively on the trumpet. So it can be a benefit to you as you develop your range. So what I'm going to tell you is one of the great books of our literature, Arben's um, Method, Complete Method for the Trumpet, for the Cornet and Trumpet, um, you can find that a link for it on my website. So if you have not already, subscribe to my YouTube channel here and also check out my website, Chris Brown, B R A U N Trumpet.com. And you will see under resources the method books link. I have the Arbin's book. I'm looking right now at the slurs section of his book. And this is on, let me see here, specifically, I am on page 44 of this particular method book. That's the first link I have on there. And Arbenz has this excellent set of slip slurs that he utilizes um, and to help in flexibility, which is how we can develop the shake. Now there's a couple of ways that people shake in, in the trumpet world. Some people do just a straight hand shake. So they'll do something like this, for example. And they kind of use their hand totally. As you can see, it's not real fluid for me because that's not how I do it. Then other people mostly focus on using their lips. So on a C, which is the way I'm accustomed to doing. I mostly use my lips, but I actually do a combination of both the lips and doing a little bit of manipulating the horn. So how do I do that and what can I do to help me do 
that technique and utilize it in a musical setting. So if you go to the Arvin's book, this is page 44, check out number 22. Now before that, he actually has a combination of exercises which leads up to 22. Now the great uh, jazz trumpet player, lead trumpet player with Stan Ken and John Harnum uh, showed me many years ago when I was in school something very similar to this and as a way that he developed shakes and this is a very good technique. So what we're going to do is start on one note. We're also going to use false fingerings at times because sometimes to play the shake properly we need false fingerings and we are going to start on a note and we're going to start with quarter notes four quarter notes in a measure, then we're going to do eighth notes, entire measure, then we're going to do triplets, four sets of triplets, then sixteenth notes, four sets of four sixteenth notes, and then finally septuplets after that, and then sustain the note. So what you do, and you'll see on this exercise, they start on G. For example, he does this. And we're going to start this slow. And what I want you to remember, when you're playing shakes, you got to be very light. If you were watching me when I was playing, I tried to maintain a very light hold of my horn. You have to be very ginger. And this is one of the problems I had as a younger player. I played too heavy and tight and tense in my shoulders. So I try to make sure everything's really loose and, and light when I play. And that is uh, the foundation for what I do really for everything I do as a trumpet player. When I'm most successful, I'm very loose and limber on how I'm holding the trumpet. You can almost pull the horn out of my hand. And you've got to be this way when you're playing shakes. Otherwise, you're almost going to have to muscle it yourself and coordinate your muscles. And that is very, very difficult to do. So I encourage you to start getting used to holding the trumpet light. And we're, it's basically a fast lip slur is what we're doing here. So number 22 in Arvin's page 44 goes like this. He starts on a G, false finger one and three. but you get the idea so it goes slow it goes faster smaller note values starts longer note values you can start on half notes if you like I think uh, John Harner showed me that started longer notes and what you're trying to do is you're trying to be gentle and just move from the lower note to the next partial up on the horn in a nice even manner now you don't want to get used to like pulling the first note out so I'm going to go up to C and show you using a middle C in the staff and show you what I'm telling you not to do. So you don't want to pull the horn on the second note. You want to go. You almost want to slide into the second note. If anything, if I could tell you anything that may be a help to you, I think this might be a good thing that I've been talking to my students recent, recently about, is you want to kind of slide up there. The primary note is the bottom note, so you want to emphasize that one. The top note, you're kind of just pulling through. So... I'm kind of trying to show you that I'm really... If you see, I was bending the top note just to try to show you how really it's not as important. So you need to really hit the first note and then really kind of blow through the second note. maintaining a light feel, not moving your horn at all or pulling it to your face while you're doing that. So if we move up to like an E, for example, let's go to a G above the staff because that's where it kind of gets a little bit, um, and in some respects, easier, but it can get harder to uh, be light when you're playing this. So I'm a G above the staff. So you can see, 
the top note was not as prominent in that exercise there. You'll just know you're just sliding over the top. So just to review what we're talking about here, try this technique. I'm telling you, if you don't play jazz, that doesn't matter. You can use this in classical music. It will help you to develop a good vibrato as well because it will give you that flexibility to go between notes. Um, it's an excellent I, a thing to practice and obviously you can use it in jazz like I just demonstrated moments ago. It's a very great technique. So once again, the shake, an awesome technique. Start off holding the horn light. Go to Arben's page 44. Use number 22 as a template. Use a metronome. Please use a metronome. Tap your foot. Uh, do it in time. And then when you get to the gig, employ that into whatever setting you're in, whether it's classical or jazz. And you will notice it will be much easier to play in the future. So hold the horn light, blow just through over top of the top note. Don't really reach for the top note, just blow over top of the top note. Emphasize the lower note, that is the primary note. And um, this will be a great technique for you. You can actually use this with lip slurs as well. Like if you're doing something similar to letter C on my lip slurs, which is kind of uh, an, a similar to the Schlossberg number 15, where I go, you can employ it into your lip slurs. I think it's a great technique to utilize. Obviously, I'm still learning, and I would love your comments or recommendations if you have anything to uh, share with me about how you develop this technique in your own playing. But enjoy learning and working on the shake. It's a great technique. Um, some people call it other things. And in, in Arben's book, he doesn't refer to it as a shake, but he talks about different techniques and uses different terms. But Either, whatever you call it, it can be a real help to you and a great resource for you and your playing. So thank you very much for checking out my YouTube channel. Once again, Happy New Year. If you uh, please subscribe to my channel where I could send you more videos. If I can be a help to you anyway, please reach out to me. Please comment. Give me suggestions. If you want me to do something, if you would like me to maybe uh, come teach a class um, online or in person or whatever you like, I would love to touch base with you as we embark on this, continue embarking on this musical journey and this awesome instrument we call the trumpet. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for checking out this video.